What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Real Talk podcast, where we just talk about everything from life to faith to everything in between, just whatever's on our mind. We just want to make it relevant and helpful to you. And um, we're talking about, actually, we're kind of following up with a, a sermon that you preached recently on this mm -hmm. episode, where you you were talking about how, how to find rest in the mess. And that's such a great concept, and I think just so needed in the middle of 2020 in a pandemic. And so we just wanted to talk more about that because we think this is something that everyone yeah. uh, watching needs uh, to hear about and to think about. And so uh, really the thesis is that like God can give us peace yes. in the midst of circumstantial chaos. And so yeah. we're going to talk about how he does that and what that means for us. And yeah. so, but, but we want to start just with personal because we are real people. Real uh, not, we're real people. This is real talk. And so, <laughs> man, just John, just be honest. Like, where are you worn out right now? And I want you guys to think about where are you yeah. worn out? right now um yeah I'm, I'm sure i'm worn out in a few different places in this season i think one place i feel worn out um is just kind of like my ability to focus and get tasks done i think mm -hmm. is one of those things I, i've struggled with motivation in this season and i think i'm kind of like psychoanalyzing myself as kind of what that is and I think part of it is right now, there's just a lack of clarity that a lot of people feel in direction or what's happening or what, what's gonna happen a month from now. And so I think, I think when things are more stable or feel more stable, you have more confidence to get things done because you have this belief that like it's gonna produce good or you're gonna build on it or whatever. I think right now it's hard to move in different directions because people feel like they just, like am I going the right direction? Am I doing the right, right. thing? Am I pivoting the right way right now? And so I think for me, um, I feel like it's, I've had to really stay on myself more so to like really get a lot of things done to stay focused. Like I've, I've definitely fallen behind on like home projects and like fixing up the house and the door that, that's been messed up for a long time. Um, catching up on different kind of bills and things like that. The church as well, like different things. And it feels like we're doing a lot of things, but we're also kind of behind. So I think I'm kind of feeling behind kind of worn out maybe on tasks. I think another thing just to be super transparent, you know, which I, I love this platform because it enables us to do that. Um, you know, we, one of our callings and lives is to be pastors and leaders in, in a church. And so what that means is our life is not just about ourselves, but that we, we lead people. We walk with people. We lead people. It's not just like, is my life and family good? I'm responsible for a lot of other people, um, both in the church and in different ways beyond the church. And honestly, one of the things that's been kind of hard in this season, not just for us, but I'm sure for all pastors and leaders, is just kind of trying to lead negative and fearful people that's draining it's draining and and yeah. it can wear you out and i have definitely felt that in a lot of ways um and I, i've noticed this in this season because i think when you're a pastor and people know you're a pastor or, or a church leader in that sense like even people that don't go to your church will reach out and ask questions or they they kind of analyze what you post online or say more because you kind of represent something yeah and so you end up in a lot of conversations and and so part of it for me is like trying to like people that are like freaking out about politics or or just can't seem to find rest in those areas unless a certain outcome happens trying to engage with those people can be really wearying and draining um as well as you know i even like sometimes people like in the church they they just i, I don't know what it is there's just always like a um, a suspicion of leadership or like they're hard to follow they're always kind of maybe assuming the worst of things you know of, of your motives or whatever and so i think as a leader in this season when you have to change and pivot a lot you know if there's not like a lot of trust of your leaders then like there's going to be a lot of like suspicion because we have to change things we've had to make a lot of pivots and so i think for me in this season for leadership wise um, it's been super life-giving with, with a lot of people, but, you know, it's like, you know, when, when you lead people, some people are, are easier to lead than others. Some people are more trusting than others, um, unless there's been like a major transgression of sorts and, and reason why there should not be trust. That means, you know, trust is earned. Obviously, that's a good thing, you know, but I, I think just having to kind of lead people on that front and always be kind of wondering kind of what, what are they thinking about it? Um, you know, at, sometimes it, it does make it hard to go to sleep at night. Yeah. Um, and so those are probably some areas that I feel like I'm feeling kind of worn in this season. Um, but we are going to talk about how to find rest and even in the midst of those places. And so but before we do that, man, what about you? Where, where are you worn out right now? Oh, man. I know, says, I, 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 know, I, know you, I know you got tested for COVID. So, I mean, yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So just just the length of the season, just like how it, it continues to go on. We're like you. You know, if you have to endure something for a short amount of time, you can like grit your teeth, yeah. you can do it. And I think what we're learning is that this is much longer than we all expected. And so Wait now, now, you know, what was a race has become a marathon. And so yeah. we're having a pivot with the way that we 
um, process things. But yeah, man, I think for me, um, you know, we're gearing back up for, you know, reopening in person, like online. And so there's a lot going on. And we've recently kind of stepped up our leadership and got more focused with kind of what we're doing. And I was looking at my task list, you oh, know, man, we, we have yeah. a shared like doc now where we all kind of know what each other is doing. <laughs> and, and so I looked at my task list, which had like 25 items on it. And I made the mistake of doing that while I was in the doctor's office on election night getting to tested for COVID. This is real story, <laughs> real talk. That'll crush you, bro. Like, yeah, I, I, and I had a moment of just like, just, <laughs> just despair, honestly. And uh, to I, God, I, let the rocks fall. I, I don't know why I was looking at my task list in the, in the doctor's office, which I was negative, by the yeah. way. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, I, I, my I, bad, I just throw you under the bus. Yeah, he's I, negative, he's cool. I, I interact with a lot of people, so I just wanted to be as safe as possible. But that was just like a, you know, a, 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 a moment in which I realized uh, how desperate but I was for the Lord and, and for his provision of power in my life. So I hope that was real enough for you guys. So that was recent. Um, so that, that's just where I'm at. That's where I'm warming out. Just like this is a marathon and like, you know, it's, you can't rely on like yesterday's experience with the Lord mm -hmm. to get you through today. Like it's a day by day thing. And so I'm just learning that resiliency kind of in the season. And so, man, we're, we're probably all worn out in different areas. And, and so that's kind of a given, but man, mm -hmm. let's, let's look at the other side of that because man, you had such a great point um, uh, on a Sunday, a few Sundays back where you said you can't find rest in yeah. a mess. And so, man, just as a follower of Jesus, not even as a pastor, but as a follower of Jesus, where are you finding rest right now? Yeah. And, and we were coming out of Matthew 11, where Jesus is, Jesus has come to me, you know, all who are, are, um, heavy laden and weary and I'll give you rest. And so even yeah. just believing, like you say that, like, even if you feel weary right now, Jesus has rest for you. Like he has it. And, and just believing that is like step number one. And some, some places that I'm experiencing the rest of Jesus right now <clears throat> is one, um, man, just a radical focus on Jesus in the chaos of the world and finding that, man, like the world can be like crazy and there can be a lot of bad things happening and everyone can be freaking out and, and you can be at peace in the middle of that. And I'm experiencing that through having, like I said, a radical focus on Jesus. And so what that means is that I, I, I give myself permission to not overly focus on politics or mm -hmm. overly focus on how um, peaceful other people are, you know, that I can, I can come to Jesus. And so what that's looking like in my life in the season is even in the light of what we've talked about where it's, we have a lot to do, but we're also at times feeling kind of weary and, and you're kind of leading an organization through a generational chaotic pandemic, election, racial tension, just lots of different things, you know, um, I, I am, my soul is actually at rest and there is a sweetness in my prayer life in this season that's that, that I've never experienced before. I'm not praying more than I normally do. Like, like I want to be very honest. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm still praying at the same volume I've normally prayed, but when I pray, it's almost like there's just like a rest. I'm feeling like I don't have to perform for God. I, I just, I have a, such a, con, such a confidence in his love for me in this season that I know he's with me and that he has me. And so it's almost like in a sense the chaos of the season has really shown how restful Jesus is because I, I don't feel spiritually weary. I feel weary in some ways, but spiritually I just have, I, I trust God. And like I've, I, I have found as I've talked to other people, like I'm not as worried about like riots as other people or who wins the election as other people. Like I'm, I'm just not as worried about that. And maybe some see that as being naive, but I believe personally that, that God has just given me Philippians 4, that the peace that surpasses understanding. There's, yeah. a, there's a kind of peace that God can give you that surpasses understanding. So that's one way I'm finding a lot of rest and just like focusing more on Jesus and giving myself permission to not focus on the things in the world that I can't control, you know? Um, you know, what's in, in um, I think it's 2 Timothy where Paul tells uh, a guy is discipling Timothy to not get distracted by civilian affairs. And so he's saying, Hey, Timothy, you're going to walk through life and in your ministry. And like, there's going to be things that seem like you should focus on them, but you shouldn't. And, and the way, you know, is there's civilian affairs, meaning like when you're, you're enlisted in a war, you're fighting a war, you're not doing what the people in that country are doing. You're there for a reason. Right. And so it's almost like the, this permission biblically for us to focus on the calling that God's placed on our lives, which is usually, um, you know, walking with God personally, loving our family, loving our kids. If we have a family like that, uh, working your job, being in community, like, and you don't have to necessarily think about the cultural tide as much, you yeah. know, though it's going to be involved. The other area that I've experienced a lot of rest in this season and that has just been so amazing, amazing, man, it's just relationships. I have never been 
more relationally healthy in my life. God is blessing all of my relationships. And, you know, this has been a great season for my marriage. And I know for some people that's not the case. And so, you know, I've been through hard seasons of marriage. So if you're there right now, like there is hope and, you know, the, the God's word and the church can help you figure that out. Um, but for us, man, this season of marriage has been amazing. Even though we've had our third kid in the middle of a pandemic, um, man, my relationship with my wife has literally, it has never been stronger. I've never been more relationally and emotionally connected to my children. Like I'm, you know, by God's grace, I'm not the distant dad that doesn't know his kids. Like I have deep relationships with all my kids. Um, dude, at the church, I mean, I'm like best friends with the guys I work with. I mean, I'm, I'm a highly relational person. And so we have amazing relationships with all of our staff. I mean, like we're, I mean, you know, I, I think people take for granted sometimes New Day. Like it's almost like people, a lot of times people come to New Day, they've never been a part of like another church, like super, super seriously. And maybe they expect like the lead pastor and executive pastor to be best friends. That's just like normal. That's not normal, you know, like really good friends, you know, um, as well as our other staff team and also like our other community group leaders that come over to our house every single month and we connect. Yeah. So I, 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 I feel so relationally healthy and God has been using those people to, to speak into my life. Um, I've never received more encouragement um, as a pastor in this past month that, that we've had in the season. And so God, and the way he's doing that though, like for us, man, is like there's not a lot of um, results or productivity. Like we're not seeing a ton of people come to Jesus in the season. We're not seeing yeah. a, a large gatherings, you know. Um, but my relationship with Jesus is, give, is restoring my soul and, and the body of Christ, the people that I'm connected to, um, I'm, I'm so close to them and I feel so in community, so, so connected to those people that it's, it's been very restful. And so like, for me, what that means is that the people that are the closest to me are people that love Jesus and they're not stressed out. And so it's actually helping me when I interact with people who maybe yeah. are in the culture and stressed out. So, um, so for me, those areas I'm finding as God is doing, put, doing, really doing rest of my life through a relationship with him and through his church. But what about you, man? Yeah, I think for me, I, I've been doing an exercise lately um, as I just read read the word, and, I, and I've been in the Gospels lately, and I'm just I'm reading Jesus, and and I'm I'm seeing what he's saying, and I'm just imagining in my mind the reality that everything Jesus did and everything he said um, was in anticipation, knowing that like pandemic was coming, mm -hmm. and so everything Jesus did was knowing that we would be in this exact moment in time. So everything he said. Uh, was knowing that this was going to happen. And so there's just that like peace that like Jesus is in control. And, and one of my favorite um, quotes from Jesus, one of my favorite things that he ever said was, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I will overcome the world. And so there's just this, this beautiful image that Jesus knows that hardship is going to happen, but he has overcome it in himself. Mm -hmm. And so where do I overcome? It's by going to him. And so that's just number one. Uh, and then number two is you, you talked about community. I think for me, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, so like this year, my, my wife and I, you know, we made a move, we bought our first house and it's a big thing for all the first kid, first house, first, like yeah. first pandemic, you know, so that's, that's what we say. Love it's a crazy year for us. But, and, and we wanted to do that because we, we wanted to host like a group in our home. And so mm -hmm. we, we were able to do that uh, this season. And it's just been so sweet to have just eight people together uh, uh -huh. with kids crazy <laughs> running around. But just like that, <laughs> that has made, you're talking about relationship and yeah. just feeling relationally connected to people. Man, that one investment to have that and, and to, you know, overcome pandemic to get together has just been really powerful. And, and, and I'm finding rest in that weekly rhythm of, of meeting yeah. with those people and also just connecting with other group leaders and stuff like that. At a time where people are feeling so much isolation, I felt like just that one decision to, to, to go into community in the season has been really important for us. Because you could have not. You could have said, yeah. hey, guys, too much going on, but you went for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's been a, a great uh, thing for my family and also for my walk with the Lord. So, man, I know that maybe some of you guys are listening to this and we're talking about areas that we're finding peace, but maybe for you, like you're, you're coming up empty. You're coming up yeah. blank. And like you, you We've can't, been there. Yeah. yeah, you can't think of like where you're finding peace peace. So man, just speak, speak to those people. Yeah. Like, man, you're, they're, they're worn out. Uh, their soul is weary and crying out. Like what, what do you do? Well, you go read uh, Matthew chapter 11, 25 through 30, like we recently talked about. Um, and I, I've always loved that passage and it, it's really relevant right now. And, um, that's the famous passage where Jesus says, come to me, all who weary and are heavy laden, I will give you rest and you'll find peace for your souls. Take my yoke upon you. Um, and so a few things I think out of that passage that, that we pulled out of it was the first few verses he talks about how um, Jesus is basically saying like my words are kind of hidden from the wise and understanding. You know, he's kind of doing the classic like he who has ears to hear, eyes to see. And, and what Jesus often says is, you know, 
I could give you the clearest truth. I could give you the answer. And if you won't receive it in your life, if you won't realize that, that maybe you're not God, and maybe I am God, as Jesus says, um, that, that, that it won't matter. I could tell it to you. I could give you the pill, but if you don't swallow it, you know, kind of thing. And so the first thing we said was really just kind of humbling yourself, like in, in a good way, right? Like if you're feeling stressed out, worn out, burned out, um, you know, what that is showing you is there's a weakness in yourself. There, there's, a, there's a limit in yourself. Yeah. And so often we get worn out because we don't realize we have those limits or we think that we don't need God, you know? And so I think that when you humble yourself, it's just like that admitting like, hey, I, I have problems, I have issues, I need help. And so if you feel worn out, it's like really kind of humbling yourself and coming to God and saying, God, like I, I, I need help. Um, getting involved in community and saying like, I don't have it all together. I need people to speak into my life. Um, I think the second thing that we talked about was Jesus, he says, come to me and learn from me, he says, you know. And so once you realize that like I am stressed out, once you admit that, it's, it's going to Jesus in his word and it's going to Jesus in prayer and in community and just saying, hey, I'm coming to you, Jesus, like broken as I am, worn out as I am. And as it says in verse 29, I, I want to learn from you. And so, you know, what we always say is, you know, um, you know, if it feels heavy, put it down, you know, hmm. if it's too heavy for you, set it down, you know. And so, and what Jesus wants to do is, is the life of Jesus, Jesus calls us to do a lot of things, but they're all for our good. And so one of the examples we used was like when Jesus says to forgive other people, that's not just because it's good to forgive other people, but because when you forgive others and don't hold things against them, like you realize, oh, actually not forgiving people makes me very weary, you know? And so every command of Jesus actually is, is life-giving to us if we do it um, with the right mindset and the right yeah. heart. And so it's really coming to Jesus and being like, where do I need to live my life like him? Because a lot of people, maybe they're weary because you don't have a spiritual community. You don't have a church, you know? And so, you, you know, we want God to give us something that our lifestyle doesn't, that, that our lifestyle is going to ruin. And so it's like, I, it's like doctor fix me, but I'm going to, my health issues, but I'm going to eat horrible food all the time. And so yeah. it's like, you know, Halsey, my wife, she's a nurse and she talks about, like they say, maybe I think it's like 75% or something of all healthcare is, is just could have been prevented, you know? Like some things can't, but a lot of things are just the result of a kind of a long and healthy lifestyle. And the same is true spiritually. And so the seasons of like where we feel worn out, I know in my life are when I kind of reflect on what's going on. And I always find different areas in which I'm not walking with Jesus. Yeah. And there's a real, like, like if you're weary, there's a reason why you feel that way. Um, and a lot of times maybe it's just like not trusting God, you know, like we're living our thinking like my marriage, it's going to be fine if I just do date night once a week. But like, if I'm not trusting God with my marriage, like it'll feel weird. I feel like it's all on me, you know? Um, and the last thing that we, we talked about, um, was to put the yoke of Jesus on you. Um, which once again, doesn't mean like you're putting all, all of his ways on you. We talked about on, the, on that, that sermon that it really just means like in a yoke, there, there's basically two places for the oxen to carry it. So when he says, take my yoke upon you, what Jesus is saying is I'm already pulling this plow, just come alongside me, you know? And so really it's just coming alongside Jesus and letting him be your salvation, letting him be um, the one that provides to you the things you need in life and your circumstances. And so it's just coming to Jesus and trusting that he's going to provide for you. And like, God, I, I know you have my marriage, you know, and I was yeah. talking to a guy the other day and he, he was realizing like, I, I cannot change my wife, you know, but that simple realization drew him to the Lord and made him stop trying to be God to her, you know, which was actually good for their marriage, you know? Yeah. And so it's one of those things where you just come to God and, and, and you realize that like whenever you're worn out, it's like admit you're worn out, come to Jesus, learn from him, like, like find the ways in which your life doesn't line up with him and do those things. Um, and then just trust God with your life. And, and once again, I think if you woke up every day, humble, wanting to be more like Jesus and trusting in complete faith that he has you, like y your life will begin to find the vitality that you long for. Yeah, um, I, I think if you're sitting here and you're, you're worn out, just weary in the season. I, I think it could be um, two places maybe you can look at is number one, like, are you truly doing too much? Like you're yeah. worn out because you're just doing too much. Yeah. And, and you know, what I love about Jesus is Jesus uh, was very fruitful, but he was never busy. And yeah. so, man, G he's just such a great example that he always did what he saw his father doing. So right back to what you were saying, like, am I, am I living in the ways of Jesus? Am I not being, um, 
overproductive or underproductive. We were kind of talking about that, that I like just over anxious with just things in life and trying to do too much. And so that's one direction you can go. I think the other direction too is like, maybe you're not worn out. Uh, you're just like hopeless. Like you're, you're lacking hope. I, I like to say like hope changes everything even when nothing has changed. And so like, mm -hmm. man, if you begin to have hope in the places of your life that you feel worn out, whether maybe it's like your marriage, you're feeling hopeless in that or in your work or in pandemic, like may maybe it's not weariness, it's just hopelessness. And you're supposed to take that to Jesus and see that he truly is like hope of the world. Because mm -hmm. when, when you truly believe that Jesus is in control and Jesus has your good in mind, Romans 8, 28, he's working all things out for the good of those who love him. It, it truly does change everything. There, there's something about that change in perspective and having that hope. Like Peter says, we're born again to a living hope that really changes everything. Uh, but I want to press in a little mm, bit because you, you talked about how like we're supposed to learn from the ways of Jesus. And, and I want to like press into that because I think sometimes people may hear that and they may say, oh, okay, so I'm supposed to follow Jesus as like maybe just my moral example or something yeah. like that. And, and I want to connect that. What Jesus is talking about is part of a larger message of his, which is called the gospel. And so that's really what's counterintuitive uh, to all religion, to secularism to every other religion in the world mm -hmm. is the gospel. So man, talk to that and, and why that's important so as we seek rest. Because like in verse 28 of that passage in Matthew 11, he says, come to me first. And then he says, learn from me. And so just like you're saying that, that even before we, you know, follow the ways of Jesus, like really when you come to Jesus, you're basically receiving something that he's already done, right? And so as Christians, we're kind of different in the sense of we work from like the finished work of Christ, meaning that we are saved not because we find rest. We are saved not because we do a lot of good things or because we obey Jesus in a lot of areas. We are saved solely because of what Christ did on the cross. And so like whenever you come to Jesus, you receive everything in advance. Like he gives you all of the salvation um, when Christ looks at you um, or when God looks at you, he sees his son Christ. And so as Christians, like literally, like the second you believe in Jesus, you are saved, you are transformed, you are new, the spirit's inside of you. And the rest of life is learning how to walk in step with that, which is yeah. Galatians 5, walk by the spirit. And so the, the way the gospel changes everything is because like, say you're, I'm guessing like, say you're worn out because you're, you're trying, cause man, being a, just, just being a family person can wear you out. Being like a good husband, a good father in light of your own stuff, like that can be so hard, you yeah. know? And so you're feeling worn out because of that. You're feeling convicted because you're not a good enough person or whatever. When you come to Jesus, all of a sudden in that moment, you are in God's eyes, um, everything that you're supposed to be, like, like you are forgiven of any way in which you are falling short. So that weight comes off yeah. and, and you're forgiven and you're renewed. And now you just got to like live that out in, in your life. And so it, it really, the, the way the gospel changes everything is it takes the burden off because it's, it's Christ's work, not your work. And so then it, you're not weary because you're not carrying it all by yourself because you're in his yoke now and he's carrying it with you. Um, and so the gospel changes everything because we don't work for our righteousness. We don't work um, to be an amazing person. We start with Christ's gift to us of salvation and newness, and we work off of that, right? And we have to keep remembering that because the enemy is always wanting to do condemnation or make us feel bad, which is why Romans 8, 1, Paul says there's no condemnation for those in Christ because we're going to be tempted to think that I, I messed up or whatever. And so, and, and also in my experience, man, when, when I start with the gospel and I go back to that, it helps break off any religion or legalism that I put on myself. Cause I'm like you, I'm sure I can be hard on myself and feel like yeah. I'm not good enough or whatever. And I just always say to myself this one phrase, all is well, like right now, all is well. Like I have Christ and he is my salvation and I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Not cause I do really good today, but because Christ gave me his free love on the cross and I've received that through faith. And so all is well, you know, and I'm going to make mistakes as a father, as a parent, um, but Christ has atoned for those already. He's, he's paid the price for those. And because he's paid the price for those, the burden is off. And now I get to live that out as a, like, like from my righteousness and not for my righteousness. And so not only does he forgive you of your sins, but takes the burden off, which then makes you perform better in life by the power of his spirit. And so the gospel changes everything because you're working from his righteousness and not for it. And so not only does it forgive you, but it also lightens the load as you walk alongside Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, I just think about uh, Romans chapter one, where it says that the, the gospel is the power of God. Yeah. And I think that's a, a reminder is. for every person out there who feels like 
like me, like you're, you're broken or you're defective and you're trying to fill your, fill your life with productivity or with trying to do the right thing and you're constantly failing yourself in your own eyes. And, and I'm just reminded that like the gospel is built on the promises of God and those are mm. built on the power of That's God. Good. And so, man, I'm just reminded, man, when you go through the New Testament and you look at all the promises of God, it, it's amazing like how much is taken care of in the Christian life. You know, you look at it like truly, like from God's mind, it's like, man, I, I am invincible until God wants to take me. Um, I could do nothing else for the rest of my life and I would be able to, to enter into the presence of God forever because of what Christ has done. He says, it is finished. Um, and so you can start looking at all these promises and you just realize that, man, it, it really breaks you of your um, your sense of self and your self-righteousness and, and, and really our, our inflated sense of, of our identity and we begin to put it back in Christ. And so I, I feel like typically the places in which we are weary are the places in which um, we've forgotten the gospel. That's why we're weary is That's because true. the gospel has been forgotten into that those places. Yeah. When we think about the worldviews, man, I mean, I think, you know, we imagine you're trying to adhere to a religion and they give you this, this, all the laws or whatever, what you're supposed to be like and what's good and what's bad. It, it's like, you know, you're going to make mistakes and, and you know, you're not going to do all the good things that you're supposed to do. And so you're always like, is, is this enough? And, and here's the thing, you always could be better. You ever like feel like I could do more work? I could do like, like, I, like I could be answering emails and creating mm -hmm. plans and sermons and different things for the rest of my life. And I would never see like my kids. I could literally do that. And I would say, well, I'm working. I have more work to do, you know? And so religion is like that where like, if it really like people act like they want it to be like, you go to heaven if you're a good person, but what is the definition of good and how do you know it's good enough? And, and if, and if, and if that's the standard, then you should always be doing more because you could always be better. And you, that, that, that is exhausting. Yeah. Then secularism or atheism or agnosticism or whatever. It's like, you know, number one, there's no standard really. So it's like, how would you even know? Like, like, how do you even know when you can rest from the work, you know? And then it's all meaningless, but then you feel this compulsion to work hard, but what's the point of it? And so it, that, that's like wearying and also like depressing and confusing. And, and the gospel, it's like on the cross, Jesus says it's, it's finished. It is finished. And can you imagine if we worked from that place? Um, you know, one of the things I'm seeing right now is my, my girls are um, one's four, one's two. And whenever I, I praise one, the other always gets jealous every time. And so like if one of them is like doing a hula hoop thing, if I look at her and I say, wow, you did a great job, Molly or Ellie, a hundred percent of the time, the other one will run up and want to do it. They long for my affirmation and me saying that. And so they're, they're always trying to do more things and they could be exhausted, but they're going to get up and do it, you know? Yeah. But if they fully knew that like, I love them it, what the moment they'll, they, they'll finally understand that, that I love them no matter how many good things they do. And, and I love them regardless of in that moment, if I'm saying you're doing a good job, you know, they would be able to rest and they wouldn't be trying to like perform and do all these things. And, you know, even when maybe when they're tired and the same thing is true with God, where it's like, if we would really, like you said, quit forgetting the gospel, like wherever we're weary, we're forgetting it in that area of life that God loves you, regardless of if, if you pray or not, or you read the Bible or you get up or you eat healthy, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you, you realize that you are loved, and when people feel truly loved, they are healthy. Because when we're trying to earn love, we do we do shady things, or, or or we do unhealthy things, or we overextend ourselves beyond our limits. And so, to work from that righteousness of Christ and from His love, like if we could really, like you said, an area of our life realize that we will not be more loved if we do more things, so, then we we will actually find rest. So logically, the the gospel says you can rest yeah. because it is finished. Man, I, I was just thinking like a good sermon, like the gospel takes out the guesswork, man. That'd be such a good like, sermon title. Because that, that's, yeah. that's what we're, we're, we're seeking. Does God like affirm me? You know, all those kind of things. And in and, and the gospel, it says, Am I screwing this thing up? Am I messing yeah. up my life? Am I messing up my kids? The answer is yes, but God, God has you, you know? <laughs> all right. So, man, so let's, let's think about, man, in a season like this, it can be wearying. You know, what, what, what's, what's important for us to remember in the midst of the mess? Like what, what do we need to keep in the front of our minds and, that everything else is pushing out? And that's a good question too, because and that was kind of the basis for the sermon was because, you know, it was one of those things it, I, I preached it on reopening Sunday. And what was interesting was it was like an exciting Sunday. We're back and God's going to move. It's like, 
but we're still in a pandemic. And it was like yep. a two days before that. So I was like, it, it's this weird place where it's like, you want to be hyped, but it's like, don't be like too hyped where it's like, okay, like this, this like, like fake. this, this still stinks. Like yeah. there's a lot of bad stuff still right now, you know? And so it's like, so it's like, we want to be honest, but the, so there is a mess. So even as we're watching this, you know, who knows if by the time this airs, if we'll know who the president is, and that'll still be going on, you know, whatever people are fighting about masks or whatever, you know, who knows what's going to be happening. So, but, but we know there's still gonna be a mess when this airs. But what I would say is, um, I think what we need to remember in this season is, is like we said, we need to remember the gospel. We, we need to remember um, the gospel that we are working um, from our righteousness that is sealed and not for it um, because we'll try to overdo it. And that's what exhausts us. And so I think we need to remember the gospel. I love what you said, Matt. I just want to copy what you said in every area of our life. And so any area that we feel worn out. Um, so for me, going back to one of my examples where it's like trying to lead either negative or fearful people, um, I find rest from that when I realize that like I am saved and right with God and, and I'm, I'm a, you know, I am the leader God wants me to be, no matter how good I do with that, you know, how well I handle that, you know, and that's very restful because sometimes like those are hard situations. And I think what, what wears me out is like, it feels hard to make those situations go well. So when you talk with someone that's freaking out about politics, it feels like there's like a 1% chance of me calming them down and I got to say everything right, you know? Yeah. And so versus someone who's maybe in a better place. And so it's one of those things where, you know, I'm realizing that like, even if I fail in this or don't do it all right, like I'm, I'm still the leader that God's calling me to be. The second thing I would say, man, is so obviously remembering the gospel, like that's like the core of everything. It's not that we earn it or we are really great Christians. It's that we, we trust it. We trust the gospel and what Christ did. I think another thing that I've been thinking about a lot, man, is we need to remember that we are not what people think about us. And the reason why it's so important right now is because everyone's freaking out about everybody. Everyone's judging everybody. And I think the fear of man is being greatly exposed right now. People are afraid of others' opinions of them. And like somebody says something mean about you on Facebook or opposes you on Facebook or some social media or sends you an email or, or says that because you didn't vote for so-and-so that you're a really bad person. Like we forget that like, okay, you can think that. Cool. And, and the fact that we can't really shows how much we're looking to other people. And that's why you're seeing all this like virtue signaling in the world is because everyone's like, oh my gosh, like I have to post this because what if people were to think that I was not this way? So right now the big one is like, I voted, mm -hmm. I voted, I voted, I voted. If you were to post, hey, didn't vote, you know, like you would be saying, oh, bad person, you know, versus if you vote, you're good. So right now everyone's saying they voted. So everyone says, oh, you good, you know? And, and so, but what that just shows is wow, we, we are desperate for other people to see that we did something good. Yeah. And so we're often looking for, and the one thing, not everyone, you can be, doesn't have to be that, but there's probably a lot of people that are posting that because it will, it will make them look good. And so I think just for all of us to remember that like, you know, what other people think about you has nothing to do with whether or not, you know, you go to heaven has nothing to do with how God sees you has nothing to do. Like, you know, listen, someone can think you're a horrible person because the way you voted and you're a, a faithful follower of Jesus. You're a great father. You're a great husband. You're a great friend, you know, all those kinds of things. And one unhealthy person or, or one misguided person can cause you to question that or whatever. And so we do need to grow and, and, and we should want to do the right thing, but for God, and, and when we do things for people, we should do things out of a love for people and out of a service to people and not so they can applaud us. And so I think right now in this season, I mean, more than ever, it's important to remember, like, find the ways in which the fear of man has taken root in you. And by fear of man, just mean like you're afraid of people thinking poorly of you, you know, find the ways that that's taking root and realize that like, man, because of Christ and what he's done, like he loves you regardless of what anybody thinks about you. And, and I bet right now, if people really took to heart that one, because I think a lot of people, even newer Christians, they might not be super aware of that idea. We've grown up in church, maybe we're more familiar with it. But even for those of us that have been Christians for a long time, like I, it, it's scary how often I see that rooting itself in my life. And I think internet culture and social media has really reinforced that to where like we're seeing all the opinions. So now we know what people think about things or think about us. And it's kind of addicting. And so I think it's just remembering that like just because people's opinions of you are more out there than they've ever been, doesn't mean they're more important, right? right? And so I think just remembering that like, you know, the gospel in every area of your life and that, you know, 
Um, man, if you're following Jesus and, and walking with your, your, your community in Christ, then, you know, like it doesn't really matter what other people think about you because, you know, they're not your creator. You don't answer to them. Um, we answer to God alone. Yeah. Man, it's funny how like one person's like negative feedback can it's overcome amazing. like 10 people's like positive feedback. And we've seen this in the church. People. How like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you could have a totally unified church, like 99 people like on board with something. And it's like the one person is against it and it can cause you to yeah. cause people like lose confidence. We need to, we need to think and talk about this because of that one, one person, you know, so that, that's really important to, to think about and remember. That's another podcast. Right uh, and, yeah. Another podcast for that <laughs> one. But, uh, but I think for me, things to remember is, uh, um, one is, I was just thinking about a Charles Spurgeon, a famous preacher quote, I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but basically he says, he says, um, visit other books, but live in the Bible. And yeah. I think that's for us, maybe you could substitute books with like articles or like social media or internet. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of times we, we live in those places and it's, it's a wearying environment to be in those places. Absolutely. And so we're living there and we're kind of visiting the Bible from time to time, but, but, but. Um, Christ calls us to do the opposite, to, to live in his scripture, because like, I need my mind shaped. Like I'm weary because my mind is being shaped by things other than the gospel and other than Jesus. And so just to give a quick example of that, so I participated in a research study during this uh, election oh, yeah. season, and it was just a, the weirdest thing where like Facebook asked me to participate in a research study, and so all my info is owned by Facebook now, I guess. But anyway, in the study, basically what they were studying is they were, they were looking at people's like, level of happiness and just joy. Um, and, and the way that they studied it is they, they kept me off Facebook for two weeks leading up to the election and then up until after the election. And so they, they did surveys throughout it and they were just measuring how you feeling right now, are you anxious, just different things like that. And so I haven't been on Facebook since like throughout the entire election season, which is crazy to think about. I'm a political science major and I haven't been able to like see what people are talking about. And like, as I took the last survey, uh, it was reflecting on the past few weeks, and I was like, man, like, I've never felt more at peace. I've never felt, like, wow. more, like, it's just amazing, like, <laughs> real data. I've never felt happier, honestly, and so it, it, it's just a good reminder that, like, in, in the places that we're living, like, those are shaping our worldview all the time, and so uh, that would be number one, and then number two is uh, just a, a pithy John Maxwell quote uh, that I've been meditating on lately, where it says, like, uh, yesterday ended last night, and uh, that's just so good, and I think sometimes we're weary because we're not doing as Jesus commanded us to do, where Jesus says uh, kind of to live in this present moment, to not yeah. worry about tomorrow, to not worry, you know, worry about tomorrow or be, like, feel guilty or ashamed of the past, but to live in the present moment, because he says each day has an of trouble of its yeah. own. And so sometimes I think that we are compounding our own weariness and our own worry because we're thinking about maybe like a little too far into the future or mm. we're thinking about the past and, and we're not just living in this present moment that that Jesus loves me right now, that that it's all going to be okay and, and I'm just trusting him moment by moment. So I, I love how it's like what, when you remember right now, like get off of Facebook, you know, but, but that's so good, man. And I think, and the crazy thing about that is like, we know we'll be happier if we do that, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I, I agree with that too, man. I think living in the present's important and like not letting those words kind of linger um, is so important. I, I've had a couple of those instances in this season where I feel like I've been kind of over-focused on the past mm -hmm. and, and maybe even in the ways like before the church like shut down, like what that was like. Yeah. And God's calling us to be in the present. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's a good word. Don't, don't rehearse your worries, right? You oh, know, yeah. Just like rehearse the gospel. Yeah. So, uh, man, we, but we just want you guys to know that, man, we do care about you, man. We are praying for you. And uh, we're going to make it through this season together, um, and most of all, through the gospel. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.